Good morning. My name is Paul Keith, and I'm the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at the College of Biblical Studies. It is my privilege to welcome you to the 2023 College of Biblical Studies Convocation and Commencement Ceremony. In a few minutes, the board, faculty, and students will process in from the rear of the building. Please clear all the aisles so they can easily walk in. Also, if you would, please silence all your cell phones. And without any further ado, I ask you to please rise for the academic processional.
In the spirit of praise and in the spirit of worship, would you put your hands together one more time? Let's give God praise and thanks for our graduates. Come on, let's do it again. Let's give God praise for these graduates. They've worked hard. They've made it. They've crossed over. They're crossing over. They're crossing over. Let's all clap together. Come on, let's sing together. We're here to worship a great and wonderful God. The song says, Lord, you're good. Your mercy endures forever. You all know it. So let's all sing to the audience of one. Everybody's on the praise team, all right? Here we go. Come on, let's clap together. Come on, everybody. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, join us. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Yeah, people from every. People from every nation. From generation. From generation to That's it. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, lift it up. Say hallelujah. We're grateful. I know y'all are grateful. Come on, let's go back to the top. Lord, you're good. Everybody, let's sing it. Come on. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. That's it, everybody. Come on, sing. Lord, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. That's it. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue from, from generation to generation. Let's do it. We worship. We worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Not just because of what God's done, because of who God is. We worship you. That's it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you for who you are. Yes, yes. You are good. Anybody believe that the Lord is good? If you just look back over the week, the month, the year, the semesters, the years of classes, we can say that God is good. Right here, let's say, you are good. All the time. All the time. And all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. Come on, you are. You are good. All the time. All the time. And all the time. All those hands together. Lord, you're good, and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And mercy endures forever. Come on, join us. Lord, you're good. Everybody, Lord, you are good. Save 
good praise. Clap your hands, open your mouth, and bless our wonderful God. I'm sure our students can attest to this, that the Lord reigns. Come on, everybody say, Lord, you reign. Can we get a little bit more track up here, please? Let's say it again. Everybody say, Lord, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Call and response. We're going to do this together. Need more track up here. Here we go. And my God reigns. My God reigns. Come on. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. That's it. Let's sing it again. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Our God Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Above. Above every name. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. That's it, that's it, that's it. Anybody a witness with power and majesty? Power and majesty. Need more. Dominion of you authority. You reign. Come on, let's take it up, everybody. Oh, join us this time. Lord God's reign. My God reign. Come on, our God reign. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Above. Above every day. That's it, church. Come on. My God reign. My God reign. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign above, above every name. How does our God reign? With power, power and majesty, dominion, dominion authority. authority. You reign. Hallelujah. You reign. You reign with power, with power and majesty, dominion, dominion authority. You reign. You reign. Come on, let's go. Take it up, everybody. You're on the praise team. Let's take it up. Let's say, Our God reigns. My God reigns. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Yeah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, Lord, you, you reign. reign. Above. above every day. That's it. Join us. Come on, say, my God reigns. My God Everybody reigns. say, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign. Above every day. Above every day. Now we've been through it. How does he reign? Through? circumstances over what's going on in your life you still come on have another chance chance. hallelujah 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 say over my circumstance over my circumstance you've given me me another chance you reign yeah tell the lord today that you're grateful because of that over my circumstance over my circumstance give me another chance Sing it to the Lord. You reign. Can you join us in that? Sing it to the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's sing it. Let's go. You reign. That's it. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. When you think back over your life, how God has always kept you, you can say, You reign. Lord, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Over my circumstances, over my life, over my family, we can say, You You reign. reign. Say, Lord, you reign. You reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Will you lift your voice with us?
Just stay right there. Come on. You ready? You ready? God is sovereign. Come on, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Lord, you reign. You reign. Hallelujah. One more time. Everybody in the building, let's say it. Come on, you reign. You reign. Over my life, Lord. You reign. Hallelujah. You reign. Come on, give God praise. Truly, God reigns. Good morning. What an awesome God we serve. Yes. Gentlemen, if you would remove your hats as we go into prayer before the Lord. And if you would bow your heads with me as we call on the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you all praises this morning because you do reign. You're holy and perfect in all your ways. And Lord, we thank you for each seat that has been filled this morning for this glorious occasion. We celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates who are here because of the grace that you have extended them. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will fill this place and fill our hearts as we continue throughout this ceremony. And may Jesus himself be glorified by the commitment and the conviction of all of those who have chosen to make you a priority in their lives. Lord, lead and guide each of these graduates as they go out from here. Uh, may you continue to help them to pursue your word and allow them to be filled with your spirit. Father, I pray that they may follow you wholeheartedly as they look to impact the world for Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, we just lift up your name and ask your special blessings upon this great institution, the College of Biblical Studies. May you be a great guide for our president, for our faculty and staff, for our administration, our students, our board members, and for every supporter, Lord, that you have chosen for this time and season to be a part of this great institution. Lord, we love you, we adore you, and we worship your holy and perfect name because you are steadfast and faithful in all you do. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray and believe forever. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen and thank God. Thank you, Board Chair, Vice, Vice Chair James Cothran for the beautiful uh, prayer and Reverend Charlie for an excellent music. Can you give them applause, please, for You may be seated. It is truly a blessing to welcome you to the College of Biblical Studies 2023 Convocation and Commencement Ceremony. My name is Bill Blocker. I'm the president of the College of Biblical Studies. I want to begin this ceremony with the end in mind. This convocation celebrates the initiation of a semester for some students, also providing a glimpse of the future as it relates to commitments that our graduates enjoy. We want to allow the time to be put together to understand what convocation means. It comes from the Latin phrase con, which means together, and vocare, which means to summon. So in essence, convocation means coming together, a calling of people together. Commencement usually indicates the beginning of the graduate's career after college. So commencement and convocation naturally fit together. It is a delight to have you with us on such a joyous and momentous day. We are grateful for an opportunity to introduce, for the first time, CBS has athletes. <laughs> we have a basketball team. This fall, we will introduce a women and men's basketball teams called the Ambassadors. Will you give them a hand? Joining me on stage to my right and to your left is Dr. Lisa Stewart, Vice President of Discipleship, Dr. Joseph Parle, our Provost, and to my left, your right, our CBS Board Vice Chair, Mr. James Calthran, Mr. Paul Keith, Vice President of Administration and Chief Operating Officer, and Twyla Gills, our Registrar. 
I would like to take this opportunity to publicly honor a longtime employee. And normally this is something that we look forward to, but this one person has made it successfully through 24 years of service at the College of Biblical Studies. She's at a point where she's transitioning into our adjunct faculty. Will you please give a round well of applause to Ms. Esmeralda Flamenco? Thank you. Thank you for her long service to CBS. Graduates and CBS students, this is the day that the Lord has made for you. This is a time to rejoice. Yes, it is our prayer today that you will be blessed during this time of celebration as you witness the milestone in the lives of our graduates. Graduates and students, two words. You completed. You did it. <laughs> As the president of CBS, I have the honor today to make some special acknowledgments. First and foremost, we want to thank God for his unwavering faithfulness to the College of Biblical Studies, especially toward these graduation candidates. I also would like to thank Houston's First Baptist, our friend and colleague, Pastor Greg Mott, and his wonderful staff for the utilization of this facility. We thank you. Let's give them an applause. Thank you. Inside of your programs, you'll see the Dean's Honor List of current students whose semester grade point averages merit special recognition. I would like to ask those to pre present the audience to stand as we recognize them with an applause. Thanks. The Dean's Honor List students, will you please rise? <laughs> Remain standing. We also want to take this time to express thanks for our Board of Trustees and Regents, if you're here, and CBS alumni, will you please stand? Remain standing. We'd like to really thank those who impress upon your life the word of God, and that is the CBS faculty who rise to the occasion to teach with excellence the provision and dedication of what they give to you. We please applaud our uh, magnificent faculty. Please remain standing. And then what would leadership be if we did not recognize the pastors of our graduates. If you are a pastor here today, if any one of our graduates, would you please stand? Pastors. Please remain standing. Now we know that no student goes through the rigors of academia alone. So on behalf of every candidate, please allow me to thank the spouses of candidates. Will you please stand? If you are a student spouse, please stand and remain standing. If you are son and daughter of one of these graduates, we want to recognize you. Please stand. A parent, step parent of one of these graduates, will you please stand? If you are any way related to any of these graduates, a friend, a distant cousin, please stand. Graduates, will you help me thank them for supporting you on this journey? Thank you all. You may be seated. And now the reading of God's Word by Dr. Marvin McNeese, Chair of General Education.
I know we just asked you to sit down, <laughs> but please stand, if you would, for the reading of God's word. And gentlemen, please remove your hats. Por favor, póngase de pie para la lectura de la palabra. Y caballeros, favor de quitarse su birrete. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Proverbios 16, 3. Encomienda a Jehová tus obras, y tus pensamientos serán afirmados. Thank you. Please be seated. Gracias. Pueden sentarse. Good morning. I would like to ask our student speaker, Byron Hooker, to begin making his way to the stage. Byron Hooker has been a lifelong servant of Christ. He serves in a variety of ways in his community. One of his servant duties in the community is his commitment as a barber. Byron is an assistant pastor to Pastor Rodney Skipper, at Inner Strength Christian Fellowship Ministries. He has made contributions in various ministries. One that stands out most is a drummer. He's teaching his children how to play the drums. He has also served as a Sunday school teacher at his church. Byron Hooker finally heeded the call to become a minister in August 2019. Today, August 12, 2023, he is receiving his recognition for what he has worked so diligently for, a bachelor's degree in biblical studies with a minor in biblical counseling. Because of his love for God, uh, God's word, he will begin this fall at the Dallas Theological Seminary on the Houston campus, where he will earn a master's degree in theology. Today, Byron brought with him those that have supported him throughout his journey. His wife of six years, Clarissa, their three daughters, Janae, Jada, and Jessica, and a host of family and friends. After his speech, Dean of Students Luzmar Kobos will lead us in bilingual worship, wonderful, merciful Savior, Salvador Maravilloso. Please help me welcome to the stage Pastor Byron Hooker. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning and greetings. Dr. Blocker, board members, faculty, staff, thank you for being present. It is an honor to stand before you today. Obtaining this degree is a huge milestone in a lifetime achievement. And like all accomplishments, a personal testimony follows. With the time they permit, I'd like to share a few words of encouragement to my peers today and family and friends as we celebrate this monumentous moment. And like all encouragement, I pray that it will carry you in the moments to come and the future achievements that are said to come. Like all believers, we find our encouragement in the Word of God. And with this being so, I'd like to read a memorable scripture that fits this occasion. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, by his, God's divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And three things that come to mind that I want to leave with you as you celebrate this moment, three things that, that you can always remember to carry you as you be encouraged to know that God has given you everything you need to live a godly life. It's your testimony, your experience, and then your resolve. It is your testimony that encouraged you to make it to this 
milestone. It is my testimony that has carried me to this place I am today. And not only our testimony, but it's our experience, the things we've gleaned, the things we've gathered, the things we had to walk through with the Lord that is present in the forefront of our mind as we obtain our degree. And not only was it our testimony and experience, but it's the resolve that we got as we walk through this milestone. Testimony. The testimony that brought me here is like all of us. Before we attended CBS, we were students at other universities, other colleges, and unlike some of my peers, I was an, a, a student at U of H, but my grades didn't say that I was a student. And because I kept that course, because it was allotted that way, I got to the point where I actually flunked out of school. And though this was embarrassing for me, the thing that to make this whole situation worse was the conversation I had with the academic advisor. I came to him for advice, asking what should I do to get my career back on track. And the thing that he said to me that rung true, that just stung, he said, son, the best thing for you to do is to stop going to school and just get a job. And as he said that, my head dropped, my heart sunk in my chest. And I could have believed what the man said to me, but I came from a good Christian home and I had a mother that believed in praying. And not only having a mother that prayed, I believed a God who was a God of promises. And not only a God of promises, but he brought me to his word and he gave me something for me to stand on. He brought me to 2 Peter 1 and 3. And he reminded me that it's something, he gave me something to prepare me for this life. And just like me, today the Lord has given you something to prepare you for this life. Though I can shout right there, though I can, I can have a hallelujah moment right there, the story does not end. As I continue to wallow in my sorrows and accept my faith, my covering, my pastor simply said to me, son, you ought to get in seminary. And like we all do, because we're good Christian, wholesome folk, we hear from the Lord, but we wrestle and doubt that we hear from the Lord. And as I wrestle, as I toss and turn, I found myself in my kitchen sink, crying, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And the Lord arrested me in that moment and took me to Psalms 46 and 10. And he just said the A clause, be still and know that I am God. And as I said, yes, Lord, I found myself going 59 South, headed to Sugarland and exit right off of Hillcroft and Regency. And before I looked up, I was in the parking lot of CBS. And as I entered into CBS, this is just how God works and how his design is better than our plans or intentions. And I thank the CBS faculty for reading Proverbs 16 and 3, because that's a memory verse that my mother gave me when I was 15 to help me learn how to be a good man. And as I entered in, into CBS, I entered into the foyer, I was greeted by Sister Iris, who asked me a series of questions, and then that question turned into an interview, and then that interview turned into admittance, and as I'm at trying to realize what's happening, I was brought back to the office of Sister Maggie Ortiz. And I'm sharing my story, I'm sharing what's happening with Sister Maggie, and we went from not going to school to going to school having a full ride. And just like, yeah, you can shout right there, you can shout right there. Just like I've met failure and saw the Lord because Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, there's a godliness that leads to sorrow, but then there's a good godliness that leads to righteousness. And just like I met the Lord in my sorrow, be encouraged to know that your testimony, you met the Lord. And the second thing I want to leave with you today is not only does your testimony ring true to know that you have all that you need to live a godly life, but your experience, the time we've spent here at CBS, no other student would ever experience. We had to adjust from going to school face-to-face uh, -to, -face to then going online. We went from seeing each other, being able to, to share arms, to now learning how to be a student online. And not just being a student, I'm among peers who are fathers, I'm among peers who are mothers, I'm among peers who are full-time ministry workers. And as the world was topsy-turvy, we had to adjust 
in learning how to walk with the Lord. And throughout all this, the thing I kept saying to myself was the conversation I had with Bryce Handler. It was our first emerging leaders meeting and it actually was our last meeting. Good to see you, Dr. Fisher. And he showed us his sword and he asked us a simple question. He said, what do you think of this sword? And to the naked eye, the sword looked like it had a good level of dexterity, like it went through some things. And because I'm just good, holy and roly, I said, you know what, I'm just like that sword. I, I hadn't been through some things. I had to walk some things to get here. But to burst my bubble, Bryce reminded me that though the sword looked like it was experienced, it actually wasn't. If it was to stand the test of battle, it was brittle enough to snap just in one strike. And what he shared with us in that moment, he said, what CBS is going to do for you, your time that you will spend here, the, the course of your academic career, the course of your lives, what will happen is you will go from being show ready to battle ready. And just like we adjusted, yeah, you can clap right there, just like we made the decision, just like we had our moments, like my good friend would say, we throw in the towel and tell the Lord we're done, but because he loves us, he throws the towel back and tell us to wipe our face. Because we experience all those moments of duress, that experience is something we'll never forget. And this milestone is the result of that achievement. The last thing that I want to leave with you today is not only that your testimony is powerful enough to attest to the goodness of God, not only is your experience because you learn how to walk with the Lord, but the last thing that I want to leave with you today to bless you, to encourage you, is to know that now you have a newfound resolve that will never be the same. What you fostered what you gleaned from sitting under the feet of Dr. Ellen, from emailing professors when you turned in work late, from them, for them loving you and then encouraging you that you were given a gift and you ought to steward it, from spiritual formation with uh, Professor Bolden, from the, the weekly Bible studies on Wednesday, amen, that CBS had every week, from all those things, you gained a new resolve for living for the Lord and loving the Lord. And along with uh, verse 3 of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 shows us some things that we've added while we've attended this fine institution. The, the text says in verse 5 that with our faith, we had to add some more excellence. With more excellence, we had to learn some knowledge. With that knowledge, we had to learn how to conduct ourselves. With that knowledge, not only did we learn how to conduct ourselves by way of self-control, but we had to learn how to be patient. We had to learn how to endure. We had to learn how to be godly. Then we had to learn how to extend brotherly love. And the last thing that the apostle says in the text is that when you add all these virtues, the best thing that you can do is have love for all. And as we've added all these virtues over the time we spent here at CBS, it has created a change in us that's moved us from show to performance. Be encouraged to know that with all this, with your resolve, your experience, your testimony, there's more encouragement in the text. Verse eight tells us that because we work for the Lord and do what the Lord tells us, though our work is neither unfruitful, it's neither useless or unproductive in what we do for him. Truth, training, and transformation. We have been given truth at CBS. We are and we have been trained. We've been instructed and we are being qualified for righteousness. And lastly, we have been transformed. Know this among all else as you celebrate this milestone event. God has given you, God has given you everything you need for living a godly life. Be blessed. CVS family, praise the Lord for allowing us to stand here today. Amen. So today let's worship our wonderful our merciful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We praise you, Jesus. We 
Thank you, CBS student speaker Byron Hooker, and to Dean of Students and Assistant Professor Luzmar Cobos for the wonderful bilingual worship and the excellent student speech. It is my privilege to introduce you to our commencement speaker, Dr. Bill Blocker. Dr. William Bill Blocker became the fourth president of the College of Biblical Studies in Houston, Texas, in 2012. CBS is accredited through the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges and the Association of Biblical Higher Education. Under his leadership, educational offerings include online degree programs, the addition of a Bachelor's of Science in Christian Leadership in the Spanish language. Some of our participants, our graduates, come from that program. A Bachelor's in Science in Women's Ministry. We have a graduate in that program. 
certification as an ACBC training center, a dual degree program with Dallas Theological Seminary, and the Emerging Leaders Initiative. And we are so proud of Mr. Byron Hooker of being one of the graduates of that first class. Thank you for your speech. CBS acquired and merged with Crossroads Bible College in Indianapolis and Fort Wayne, Indiana. With this merger, CBS now has four locations, Houston, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and online. Dr. Blocker earned a Master of Divinity degree from Chicago Theological Seminary and a Doctor of Ministry in Christian Education from Dallas Theological Seminary. Dr. Blocker currently serves on the following board, the Association of Biblical Higher Education, United World Missions, and the Advisory Board of Overseas Council. Dr. Blocker is married to his high school sweetheart, Zelda. They will be celebrating their 39th anniversary this year. The Blockers have seven adult children and three grandchildren. Please give a warm CBS welcome to Dr. Bill Blocker. This is truly an honor to share with you graduates today. Uh, this is the day that cannot, will not ever be repeated. If you had a plan, I can guarantee you to get everybody in this room in the same spot, in the same way, something would invariably go wrong. So this is God's divine plan for you to be here celebrating on this special day. You are esteemed graduates of the College of Biblical Studies. You're on your significant way and you have done the unfathomable. You're getting ready to cross the finish line. And as you begin a new chapter in life, the number one thing I want you to wrestle with today is what is your plan? What is your plan? <laughs> Contemplate that for a second. Not just these graduates, but I think all of us need to wrestle with, what is our plan? What are we doing? Why are we here? What do we want to accomplish? Most people do plan. Even those who don't plan, they have a plan not to plan. <laughs> plan to grow up for adolescence. A plan to go to school, a plan to graduate, a plan to get a job, a plan to get married or not, a plan to have a family, a plan to retire, a plan that will allow us to be satisfied, gratified and enjoy life. The Bible encourages planning, believe it or not. Well, you know, Jesus said himself, he said, who goes out to build a building and first does not count the cost? That's a plan. What king goes to battle? Not knowing the outcome, that's a plan. Planning is necessary. But what happens when plans get interrupted? Sometimes, if we're not steadfast on this Christian journey, we can bank all of our intuition, all of our stock and barrel and everything into our plans. And sometimes these plans will lead us into debilitating situations. During these times, our emotions can go in autopilot. We become saddened, we lose our focus and we can't seem to understand how to get back on track. We become so perplexed, we can't move forward, we can't go backwards. It's easier just to simply throw the flag up and say, I give up. I know you felt that way along your CBS journey. I know most of us at some point in our lives have felt like this plan is not working. 
What, we, what do we do when our plan doesn't work? What do we do when we have a plan and it begins to implode? The last two or three years, if you had your eye on really what's happening in our world today, I think you can pause and realize that we're in big trouble. Christian leaders are crashing and burning. The ones that are not going AWL. Christian marriages are imploding. And development among our millennials, and I dare say our alpha generation, the opioid epidemic is just staggering. Our faith, the thing we say we believe in, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the reality is we don't know where to go when our plans fall apart. And although we say we exercise it, we go to plan B that we haven't thought through, plan C and our contingency plan, and when all those plans fall apart, we're left in dismay. Today, I want to lift up, see, three simple principles that I pray that you graduates and all that are here will take with you. The question that will be raised and the principles that will be found is from the passage that was read earlier in Proverbs 16, verse 3. I want to back up to verse 2 because it sets the stage for verse 3. All the ways of man are clean in his own sight. But, contrast, the Lord weighs the motives. And then it goes on to say, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. This book of Proverbs is not just a regular book. If the Bible itself is the paramount for godly living, the book of Proverbs is to give us insight and wisdom on how to live that godly life here on earth. Treasure of wisdom. The book of Proverbs, primarily credited to King Solomon, known for his unparalleled wisdom. Proverbs offers practical advice, guidance, righteous living, and success in many cases. Its nuggets are valuable through all stages in life. My prayer today for everyone here, not just you graduates, is that we would learn to grasp these fundamental principles and apply them to our daily lives. Principle number one, know that our human limitations are just that, limited. There are limitations of our human perspective. And what are those limitations? This is problem number one I'm going to lift up there for you. While it's good to plan, it's great to plan, we can't bank on those plans. Our plans may seem wise. They have good intentions and well in our own eyes. However, God's perspective and his wisdom surpasses all understanding. We must first recognize our own limitations, our human limitations and our perspective. Have you ever looked at something only to come back and see years later that you were looking at it wrong? If you haven't, keep on living. Some of the plans we had early in our life when someone would ask us, what do you want to do be when you grow up? Thank God he didn't listen to those plans. But it says that all of the ways of man are clean and right in his own sight. That means we don't see anything wrong with our plans. We have an inability to recognize how to see things outside of ourselves. There's some wrong plans. Number one, I would say selfish plans. 
Problem is we can't see through our own sight the right perspective, but we develop plans that are selfish, manipulative, cunning. You don't have to go far. You can think about the Gibeonites. They devised a plan. It looked well. Hey, we need to figure this out. In chapter 9 of Joshua, and what happens it ends up putting Je Joshua and everybody else in jeopardy. Collusion. What about David's plan? Selfish to pursue Bathsheba. He connived and schemed, and in the end, it left an everlasting impression not only on him but all of his family members. There is a difference in developing a plan through God's lenses and doing something from our own lenses. Please hear this. Sometimes, I would argue most of the times, it is almost impossible for us to write a plan that's free from selfish ambition. We have to recognize that. And we dare not call it holy ambition. We have selfish plans, and then also we have self-reliant plans. Jesus gave this account of the rich young fool in Luke 12, where he relied upon his riches, planning for things to come, not knowing that his time was up. Point number two. Not only must we know our limitations, our human perspective, but number two, we need to learn how to surrender to God's sovereign guidance. You ever been in a situation where you knew the Holy Spirit was telling you to do something and you just brushed it aside, you just didn't pay it attention, and that very same unctioning from the Lord would have kept you out of a whole lot of trouble? I was... Um, in college, during my college days, and had been trained in martial arts for several years. And I had a plan to go play basketball in some areas that, um, let's say, it was not actually safe to go play in for college students. And there were cliques involved, and one day, I decided to go play. I was by myself playing, and when you play pickup basketball, you just get picked up. But I was sitting on the side. My plan was to get in and play, but I was sitting on the sidelines, and in that process, guess what? I didn't get picked up. Why? Because I wasn't in the group. I wasn't known. And that plan was to just insert myself into the game. And I did so because I asked the guy, pleaded with him to let me in the game, and I started playing. But behold, it was obvious that I wasn't there and I didn't belong. Have you ever been in a spot where you knew you shouldn't have been there and the planning you had put you in the wrong place at the wrong time? I was there. And behold, sad to say, basketball is a physical game and they start to get physical and uh, sometimes it's intentional. And I was the outsider, and the guy just kept elbowing me and elbowing me to the point where I had it up to here. And my first thought in my divine plan didn't go the way I planned it. I figured I'd just nudge him back. And when I nudged him back, he let it go. The game was over, he came back the next game, somebody had picked him up and he was still holding me. But when I went up, he took his fist and jammed right in my throat. That's when I abandoned all plans. Yeah, I feel what I'm saying. And before I know it, I was in a whole lot of trouble because I kicked him in the side and broke three of his ribs. And those things you don't forget. Needless to say, I end up paying a price because that year I was up for a tournament. And because I knew better, I wasn't able to compete. 
My words to you graduates, don't do anything based upon circumstances, making your plans isolated because they have impact not only on you but others. So how do we surrender to the sovereign guidance of God? Committing our plans means to acknowledge that God is in control of everything. The first word in Proverbs of this chapter, 3, 16 verse 3, it assumes that there's an action step. We quickly go to plans, but the action step in the text says to commit. Commit. Dr. P, we used to call him Dr. Dwight Pentecost, impacted me in such a way when, before I ever entered school, he wrote this book called Design for Discipleship. And he talks about the different types of plans and people who are committed and followers of Christ. He says, there is the curious bunch. They follow, they go through the motion, but they're not really in it at all. They want to see how they can get benefit out of it. And then there's the second group called those who are convinced. These individuals are convinced that Jesus is Christ, but when the hard times came, they abandoned the ship. But then there's that third group called the committed. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter how hard times get. It doesn't matter what happens in front in the future. They are committed to follow him to the end of their lives. The Proverbs seem to suggest we have to commit. We don't know what yet. It says commit something, commit. The word literally here, this, this word that's used is, is almost Commit your works. It's, it's like an idiom, if you will. It says to rely on. It means to literally in a position to trust. But what must you commit? Your works. Your works. This is plural, and it literally means your actions, your deeds, your motives, and all your undertakings. You take it all, and I love this because in the context of this, it literally means to roll all your actions in front of God, to put them out there, your thoughts, your purpose, your intentions. Have you paused the thought to think through how many times you ran things past Jesus? Often we go through life and we don't roll too many things past them. We ask, Lord, the Christian way of doing things, I made my plans. Will you please bless them now? In order to understand the purpose from which God is going to actually allow us to move forward, we must acknowledge his, his sovereign and omnipotent hand. He is the end. He's the beginning and the end and everything in between. As we go through life, we have to roll all of our actions, all of our thoughts, our purposes, and our intentions in front of the master planner. When we surrender this to his will, that leads us to the third blessing. Number one, we got to know our limitations and our limited perspective as humans. Number two, we have to surrender everything and acknowledge that without him, we can do nothing. But thirdly, then we enjoy the blessings of God establishing our plans. He says, commit them, all the works, and then he will. When we submit to God's leading, he aligns our plans with his purposes. He brings about success and fulfillment, not in the way always that we think, but he establishes them in a way that is evident to everybody around us. Come here, Noah. No, I need you to build an ark. 
But God, that doesn't make sense. It hasn't rained. Noah, I want you to build it to my specification. Look at Noah's response. The fact that he followed God's plan to the T allowed his family and all creation two by two to be saved. Have you ever thought about this? What happened, what would have happened if Noah would have said no to Christ, no to God? Wow. I hasten to think. Noah obediently followed his instructions and diligently carried out the plan to construct the ark. And the story underscores the significance of following God's plan and receiving the blessings in doing so. Joseph. What about Joseph? Joseph went through a series in Genesis 41 while in prison, actually interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And when the famine came, God gave him his plan. And that single plan that he had, instead of relying upon his own ability, Joseph acknowledged that God's blessing and wisdom would come. And through that, that comprehensive plan, all of Egypt and the neighboring lands survived the famine. Nehemiah took the time to learn about all the aspects of his heartfelt desire and following God to build the wall when the temple was destroyed. He, what, how, why would he go build the wall? Because God told him to. Meticulously planned project, organized the people, overcome the various challenges and the oppositions, and he kept on going relentless. Well, time would not permit to go ahead and talk about Esther. Her plan ended up working out for those people back in that day, and we quote the phrase to the day for such a time as this. What about Mary? Who against the culture and all the things that happened took the risk to say, God, do unto me as you will. When we are in situations, even if our plans go astray, stop for one moment and say, God, this isn't working. I've tried it my way. I need to try it your way. God has a plan. He always has a plan. He has a plan before the world was even created. He had a plan to create the world. He had a plan to create man. And even when man fell, he had a plan of redemption to save him before he even fell. And if a God can plan that, he for us has a plan of redemption. But for those who may not know him, he has a plan of salvation as well. God's plan, a plan that even he, when he came here on earth, had the tension between his own human will, his own human plan, and the divine plan. And when you run into crossroads between your plans and God's plans, there's only one thing that you can say, not my will, but thy will be done. As I conclude, I want to challenge you graduates to examine your plans. James talks about those who go out and make a plan. Here's a strange, have you ever thought about this? We make a plan in the future. God must be, he, he's loving and kind, but he must be looking at us when we make our plans. And as he's looking at us, he's, he has to be laughing, I believe, because we're making plans for a future that we haven't even experienced yet. How does that sound? As Paul says, as he was trying to get to a destination, if the Lord wills, 
And James, don't say you're going to do something if the Lord wills. I'm going to do it. There was this um, time I went racing and I had um, bought a vehicle. And in that vehicle, I didn't realize they gave you free drag racing, literal race car training they give you. And they, it was wonderful. I drove to Austin. They put you on a track. And I figured when I first got there, my plan was to hop on the racetrack and just burn those tires. Just burn them. When I got there, they had another plan for me. That plan was that I was going to sit in the classroom for three hours. That wasn't my plan. But in the class, I learned the significant mechanics of this two and a half ton car and how that two and a half ton car sat on and nothing else about six by eight inches of rubber. And that's all those two and a half tons were sitting on all at one time. And they taught the aerodynamics of what happens and how to drive that vehicle. And in that plan, I must admit, I had some hesitation. Because when the professor said to me that, hey, nobody ever dies from speeding. That sounds foolish. But he came back and said, it's when they hit something, that's when they they die. So I get in the car after three and a half hours of this lecture back and forth, and my plan was to hop in there and just floor it. Got in the car, about 17 other people racing around the racetrack, and I floored it. Took off, going around the track. But then it started to dawn on me that this is not just a straight, this is a racetrack that has an oval shape to it. And I wasn't really paying attention of what to do when I get around the curve because I was thinking about my plan. Well, I saw the curve ahead. I couldn't go faster because there were cars in front of me. I couldn't slow down because there were cars in back of me. Panic start to settle in. And when a panic start to settle in, the decibels of the noise exceeded 98 dB. And my head started pounding. My palms started shaking as I was getting ready to hit the turn. I didn't know what to do. My plan was failing. And the things that I was thinking about at that time was, Lord, I need your help because I've made some foolish plans. And as I was hesitant to go forward faster and slow down faster, I had this helmet on. And inside the helmet, I heard this voice, the instructor saying, Bill, I see your hesitating on the gas and you don't know how to press the brake, but let me walk you through this. There's a plan on how you turn the corner. I want you to listen to me closely. As soon as I heard the voice, my heart began to slow down a little bit. And then as he continued to talk to me, he says, now when you hit the apex, that's the curve, What you want to do is ease off the gas just gently and don't ride the brake, but just tap just a little bit and let the car take you around the curve. And as he was talking, I felt a great relief because I know he was with me while he wasn't in the car with me. His voice was carrying me through. And as I began to turn around the apex, He says, I'm going to sign off now. The end of the finish line is just ahead. What you need to do is focus on that mark as you go around the finish line and just cruise on in. Cross the finish line. He signed off and his final words were, I will be here if you need me. My confidence got boosted 10,000%. I had abandoned my plan, I had a new plan. 
And his plan was to allow me to get to the end safely. And so as I turned around that apex, he signed off. My confidence got big and I, I eased on the gas just a little bit. Hit 100, 105, 120, 125. And I wasn't threatening a bit because I know I had somebody on the other side who can see me to the end. And as I turned the corner, I looked at that mark and I said, I'm home free. I put the pedal to the metal and I pressed toward that mark. And when I got through, I heard the engine downshifting as I came across the finish line. I saw him standing there doing this. I got out the car and said, Bill, you did it. Graduates, you may have your own plans. But listen to the verse, voice of God through his word. When you find yourself in crazy situations because your plan is not working, let the master planner speak through his word and tell you, I got you. I created you. My plan of salvation saved you. My plan of redemption kept you. Trust my plan and everything is going to be all right. And as you turn around the corner in life and there are obstacles there, you have the confidence that he who has began a good work in you is faithful to accomplish it. When you look at it, realize you have limitations in your human perspective. Realize that you have to surrender everything to the sovereignty of God and then enjoy the blessings of following his plan. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your plans. Your plans are perfect. We know, Lord, that we must recognize that we have limited perspectives. Help us to see that in everything you're sovereign, your guidance is needed every single step of the way. And when we mm, can't see your hand, have us to trust your plan. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of these graduates. Be with them as they go forth, Lord. Show them the blessings of your plan. Allow them to cling to it. Allow them to dwell in it, to relish in it that you may lead them safely to that finish line and have them recognize your voice saying, well done. We thank you for all these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in thanking Dr. Blocker for his exceptional commencement address. Our hearts are overflowing as again, we have the privilege of witnessing this commencement ceremony of our associate and bachelor's degree candidates. In the middle of your program, you will see the list of names of the candidates for graduation. As indicated in your program, our associate students will be first, followed shortly by the bachelor's degree programs. Unfortunately, it was brought to my attention this morning that some students' names were inadvertently left off the program. To those students and to their family, I sincerely apologize. We will get you a program with your name on it. Some associate and bachelor's candidates have achieved certain grade point average levels that warrant the designation of graduating with honors. Associate candidates graduating with any honors designation are further distinguished by the wearing of a red honors cord with their regalia. Bachelor of Science candidates graduating with any honors designation are distinguished by the wearing of a gold honor medal with their regalia. The President's Men is an initiative started by the President to disciple and mentor young men in understanding God's purpose as they journey through theological education with, while attending CBS, these men are identified with a green and white honor cord, 
we also have first responders who are also identified with a special honor cord. CBS commencements seek to balance dignity and celebration. So as the graduates receive their diplomas individually, please let each graduate hear your support of their accomplishment. As I mentioned, because we seek a balance of dignity and celebration, I would encourage you, first of all, to applaud the graduates as they come. We are not one of those type of graduations where we say you must withhold all of your applause until the graduates cross the stage. At the same time, we are not one of those commencement ceremonies where people are encouraged to get bullhorns or uh, interrupt the next graduate's um, announcement with inappropriate um, ways of celebrating. And so we just ask you to honor that. Additionally, the graduates are gonna be emerging from my uh, left and they're gonna proceed across the stage right here. CBS has arranged for uh, professional photos for the graduates. However, if you want to take your own photo, you can get in the area, these empty rows right back here or right back here. We simply ask you not to come to the front of the aisles to block, block other graduates' views. And if you're wondering, yes, this applies to you. Today, we're honoring the recipients of the Associate of Biblical Studies in Spanish and English at our commencement. Since our degree programs are offered in English and Spanish, I will translate the portions of the ceremony for the benefit of the Associate of Biblical Studies candidates and their guests. Puesto que el nuestro asociado y bachillerato están ofrecidos en inglés y español, voy a traducir esta porción de la ceremonia para el beneficio de los que reciben el asociado de estudios bíblicos y para sus familias. Hoy, nosotros honramos a nuestros estudiantes que han completado el asociado de estudios bíblicos del Colegio de Estudios Bíblicos. The Associate of Biblical Studies is a 60-hour program in English and Spanish designed for Sunday school teachers, missionary, and lay leaders in churches. El Asociado de Estudios Bíblicos es un programa de 60 créditos en, en Biblia y Teología en Inglés y Español que es diseñado para maestros de escuela dominical, los misioneros y líderes laicos en iglesias. And now, we are about to witness the graduation of our fine class of Associate of Biblical Studies candidates. Y ahora que estamos a punto de presenciar la graduación de nuestra excelente clase de candidatos para asociado en estudios bíblicos. Professor Alex Hernandez will call out the names of the graduates. I will ask him to stand now and ask that he approach the stage so we can recognize him. Profesor Alex Hernandez irá llamando los nombres de los graduados. Le pediré a Profesor Hernandez que se ponga de pie y venga a la plataforma para que podamos reconocerlos. I will now ask the president of the College of Biblical Studies, Dr. Bill Blocker, to please join me. Ahora me gustaría pedir al presidente del Colegio de Estudios Bíblicos, el Dr. Bill Blocker, que por favor se una a mí. Will the candidates for a graduation with an Associate of Biblical Studies degree, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm pleased to certify on behalf of the faculty that these students, including those in abstentia, have met the necessary prerequisites, have completed the required work at the College of Biblical Studies, and are candidates for the Associate of Biblical Studies degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I, as president of the College of Biblical Studies, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees in accordance to the laws of the state of Texas, hereby confer to these graduating students the Associate Biblical Studies degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges thereto. Congratulations. Our ushers will now escort the associate students to the stairs on my left that lead up to the stage. As they proceed to the stage, we would like to present a video that describes the College of Biblical Studies.
Since 1976, the College of Biblical Studies has provided an affordable, biblically-based college education to a diverse student body. And CBS is one of just a few Bible colleges with both regional and national accreditation. A top-rated education with a biblical foundation means students will be equipped to lead with wisdom and confidence. At CBS, you'll gain a competitive advantage in navigating the realities of an ever-changing world. Classes are offered online or at one of our three campus locations in Houston, Indianapolis, and Fort Wayne. CBS offers several options to fit your needs. Choose from one of our bachelor's or associate degree programs or our certificate program to equip you for your ministry or business career. We even have degree programs taught entirely in the Spanish language. Or, for personal enrichment, enjoy one of our non-credit spiritual growth classes. At CBS, you'll learn to understand the Bible and its truth in such a way that it transforms your life forever. Students of all ages, ethnicities, and backgrounds form lifelong bonds with classmates and professors. Over 25,000 students have experienced this life-defining transformation. National reach with an international impact. Our students impact lives and transform communities. If you have a desire to change your world, come see for yourself what transformation looks like. The College of Biblical Studies. Truth. Training. Transformation. Francis Baptista Francois. Anthony Bryant. Lillian Chan. Ciara Mabel Diaz. Edgar Escobar. Milton Waman. Kevin Ordon. Yeah. Yuri Valdez Martinez. Reginald Rimble. <laughs> Stephen Spiller. Moses Waddell. Mm -hmm. 
Congratulations. Also today, we are witnessing an outstanding group of students marking the completion of their Bachelor of Science degree program. Over the past few years, these candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree have labored and stand here today having finished well. Hoy también somos testigos de un grupo destacado de estudiantes que completan su programa de licenciatura. En los últimos años, estos candidatos para el título de licenciatura en ciencias han trabajado y están hoy aquí habiendo terminado bien. The College of Biblical Studies offers Bachelor's of Science degrees of Biblical Studies, Biblical Studies and Biblical Counseling, and Biblical Studies in Christian Leadership in English and Spanish in our Accelerated Degree Completion Program and a Bachelor of Science degrees in Organizational Leadership, Women's Ministry, and Biblical Studies. El Colegio de Estudios Bíblicos ofrece el título de licenciatura en Ciencias en Estudios Bíblicos, Consejería Bíblica, y en Estudios Bíblicos Liderazgo Cristiano en Inglés y Español, y en Estudios Bíblicos en nuestros programas accelerados y de finalización de título. Y el título de licenciatura en ciencias en liderazgo organizacional, ministerios de mujeres y estudios bíblicos en nuestro programa tradicional. Typically, commencement ceremonies honor graduates that anticipate the beginning of their career after receiving a degree. CBS is proud that most of our graduates are already actively involved in ministry positions and occupations. They do not come to CBS so they can begin their ministry. They come to CBS to expand the impact of their ministry. <laughs> Típicamente, las ceremonias de graduación honran a los graduandos y anticipan el comienzo de sus carreras después de recibir un título. CBS engurriese en que la mayoría de nuestros estudiantes ya se encuentran activamente involucrados en posiciones y ocupaciones del ministerio. Ellos no vienen a CBS para que puedan iniciar su ministerio. Ellos vienen para que puedan expandir el impacto de sus ministerios. With this in mind, please allow me to brag just a little bit about this distinguished group of men and women. Con ese pensamiento en mente, permítame alardear un poquito sobre este distinguido grupo de hombres y mujeres. Here's just a sampling of the duties these graduates are currently undertaking. Four are already senior pastors. Ten are associate or assistant pastors. Two are involved in children's ministry. Three are music ministers or dance ministry. 18 are involved in evangelism, outreach, or jail ministry. 10 are involved in counseling, prayer, lay, and servant ministry. And one is involved in the visitor welcome ministry. Lo siguiente es solo una muestra de las tareas que actualmente estos graduandos están realizando. Cuatro son pastores principales, diez pastores asociados o asistentes de pastor, dos en ministerio de niños, tres en ministerio de música y ministerio de danza, 18 ministerio del evangelismo, alcance y prisión, 10 de consejería, oración y servicio laico, y uno en ministerio de visitantes y bienvenida. Bienvenida. This class has a number of individuals also employed outside of ministry as well. 20% are employed in the business sector, 17.7% sector. in education, 2% in financial services, 15.5% in healthcare, 4.4% in construction engineering, 15.5% employed in church, and 4.4% other, 4.4% industrial manufacturing, 2% IT, 2% nonprofit, 2% oil and gas, 2% retail, 2% self-employed, 2% transportation, 2% media, and 2% in chaplaincy. You all are very busy people. 80% are ethnic minorities. Esta generación también tiene individuos empleados fuera del ministerio. 20% empleados en el sector empresarial, empresarial, 17.7 en el sector educativo, 2% en servicios financieros, 15.5% en sector salud, 4.4% en firmas de ingeniera, construcción, 
15.5 empleados en el ministerio en, en iglesia, 4.4 otros, 4.4 en industria, industria fabricación, 2% en tecnología, 2% en organizas sin fines de lucro, 2% en la industria de petróleo y gas, 2% en ventas al menudeo, 2% son trabajadores independientes, 2% en transportación, 2% en medios de comunicación, 2% capellanía y 80% son minoría étnica. I would now ask that Dr. Bill Blocker, the president of the College of Biblical Studies, please join me again. Will the candidates for graduation with a Bachelor of Science degree please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, I'm pleased to certify on behalf of the faculty that these students, including those in abstention, have met the necessary prerequisites, have completed the required work at the College of Biblical Studies, and are candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I, as the president of the College of Biblical Studies, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, hereby confer to you graduating students the Bachelor's of Science degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto. Congratulations. Our ushers will now escort the baccalaureate students to the stairs on my left that lead up to the stage. Just as the body of Christ is adorned for their wedding day, many of our graduates come to CBS from other nations as depicted by the flags displayed. Many of the graduates have prepared their entire life for this moment. We are proud of our graduates who are the hands and feet of Jesus, who take the sound of good news and the love of the King all over the earth. The wine and the bread and the sons of the earth. How beautiful the feet that walked the long dusty roads and the hill to the cross. How beautiful. Joe Agudelo, magna cum laude. <laughs> Terrell Aldridge. Vela Black. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jerome Burgess. Irma Cantú. Sean Castleberry. Justin Duke, summa cum laude. Esmeralda Gadala Maria, summa cum laude. Hernan Gonzalez. Antoine Gray. Shaglenda Green. Thank you. Zi Chen He, summa cum laude. Tamisha Hurd. Byron Hooker. Benny Johnson. Travis Johnson, summa cum laude. Danielle Manglamot, cum laude. Blake Martin. Jesse Pasifuma, summa cum laude. Jared Phillips. Thank you. Jennifer Ramirez, summa cum laude. Thank you. Julie Russell. Matthew Sams.
Ezrick Sanders. Umbertina Serrano. Tamika Washington, magna cum laude. Robert Young. Graduates, we have one more piece of business we need to address. Will the graduates of the associate's degree program as well as the graduates of the bachelor's of science degree program please rise. At my signal, I would like for each of you in unison to shift your tassel moving it from the right to the left side of your martyr board as a final symbolic act of your academic accomplishment and graduation. You may do so now. Congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to present to you the 2022-23 graduating class of the College of Biblical Studies. I would like to ask the faculty to encircle the graduates, laying hands on those in the outer seats. Graduates, please be seated and remain seated and hold the hand of the graduate next to you. For the rest of you in the audience, I would like to ask you to stand and extend your hands towards the graduates. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love you and keep your commandments, let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now on behalf of these graduates, your servants. I pray that you will use them in a mighty way to further your kingdom here on earth. Help them to remember the things they have been taught from your precious word. Help them to be careful not to turn from it to the left or to the right so that they might have success wherever they go. Help them to meditate on it day and night and to be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make their way prosperous and then they will have success. Wherever they go, help them to be ever mindful that you are with them and will guide them and comfort them. Let the words of their mouths and the meditation of their hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The faculty may now return to their seats and you may be seated.
Well, good morning, everyone. And to our graduates, congratulations. Congratulate, yes, give your hands, give yourself a hand. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Lisa Stewart, and I have the joy and the honor to serve as the Vice President of Discipleship at the College of Biblical Studies. Today is a special day because it represents the culmination of the great deal of work in your studies and a time to look forward to what God has ahead of you, your next achievement. This event actually begins a new relationship with you as a graduate of College of Biblical Studies. You are now an alumnus with all the rights and the privileges therein. The College of Biblical Studies is proud of you and your accomplishments. Now today, a select few baccalaureate graduates will be inducted into the Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society. The purpose of the Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society is to encourage and honor graduates from accredited institutions of the Association of Biblical Higher Education by recognizing your outstanding academic scholarship, your approved Christian character, and Christian leadership ability. No more than 7% of graduates may be nominated in any year. The CBS faculty committee selected the following three honorees who meet the criteria of exhibiting Christian character, leadership ability, and at least have a cumulative grade point average of 3.3 on a four point scale or its equivalent. I will ask the honorees to come to the stage individually when their name is called to pick up their medal along with their Delta Epsilon Key certificate and then return to their seats. The first honoree is Hillary Yiken. Now, Hillary is unable to join us in person, but she is attending virtually. Congratulations, Hillary. <laughs> the second honoree is Jesse Pasifuma. Please come to the stage. Congratulations, Jesse. Congratulations. The third honoree is Nestor Torres. Please come claim your certificate and pen. Okay, Nestor is not here to join us, but congratulations to you, and welcome to Deptor Esalon Key. Today, we will also announce the honorary alum selections for the Delta Epsilon Key Honor Society. The, honor, the honorary alum must have graduated at least 10 years ago. The two honorees are here today, and I will call their names and ask them to come pick up their certificate and medal have their picture taken with Dr. Blocker, and then return to their seats. The first honoree is Campos, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly, Londono, and I apologize if I messed it up, please forgive me. He serves as the interim pastor of Horeb Baptist Church, where he was previously pastor for 38 years. He teaches at Louisiana Baptist College, I'm sorry, Louisiana Baptist University, where he is pursuing his doctorate. He serves as a church planter evaluator for two Baptist conventions of Texas, Texas Baptist and the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention. Let's give him a hand. The second honoree is Wilma Shaw. Wilma Shaw is the founder of a nonprofit called Perfectly Rap, which exists to build up those who have been traumatized through sexual abuse and rape with support groups, advocacy, and training for churches to create support groups for survivors in their church community. She is also the author of Perfectly Rap Survivor. Congratulations, Wilma. And congratulations again to you, our graduates.
Thank you, Dr. Stewart, and congratulations to um, all of those who were selected. Please stand for our closing hymn and then remain standing for our benediction. The candidates will recess out to the foyer. Please wait to leave in order to give the candidates sufficient time to arrive in the foyer and for your safety, please meet in the foyer. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. The lyrics will be found on screen. I invite you to sing along with us. Let's lift this great hymn of the church. It speaks of God's faithfulness. We're grateful. Come on, let's lift it. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh
Gentlemen, if you will, remove your hats and receive this blessing. College of Biblical Studies, class of 23, 2023. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he bless you as you lie down. May he bless you as you rise up. May he bless you going out and coming in. May he bless all that you possess and bless him who possesses you. Now to him who is able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, and dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the recession.